Uh, good morning, fellow aviators. Uh, today is September 22nd, about 2021, about, um, oh, I don't know, 7.30, quarter to eight in the morning. Froze my butt for riding the motorcycle down this morning. It was 55 degrees when I left the house. And last week we had high 90s, so it's like somebody turned the switch and now we're into winter time. Anyway, the plan today is I want to show how to install a Smart Glide, configure Smart Glide, and then have a demonstration of it. Uh, the software is 8.91 for the G3X Touch, and you can download it, put it on a blank SD card. Then what you do is you stick it in this spot right here. I've already done this, so I'm going to just kind of do this mock install so you can kind of see what I do. Uh, the documentation from Garmin as far as setting up the Smart Glide is, is right now it is very poor. You can't find anything. And in fact, I installed the software. It wouldn't work. I didn't know how to get it in, uh, working. But luckily, uh, Midwest Panel Builders did a video, kind of showed the configuration you have to do. So I'm going to show that and then uh, uh, how to set it up and get it working and then we'll go up and I need to calibrate I want to find out what my sink rate is I think it's probably between five six hundred feet a minute but I want to check and make sure uh, before I uh, do some real serious work with the smart glide and <clears throat> after I do that then I'll uh, see if we can't uh, find a uh, airport within a range and do a brief demonstration so the whole purpose of this video is is to introduce you to smart glide and how to install it and how to configure it uh, to do that uh, you would normally you would put the sd card like i said in here uh, with the software on it uh, again install it from a, a blank card on your home computer you put the 8.91 on it uh, put it in here then you would turn the main power to the panel on so you can fire up all your avionics and you want that all done uh, because the software update includes a bunch of other updates to other uh, pieces of uh, equipment that you have in the plane. <clears throat> so you don't want to just do the G3X touch. You want to do all, all the stuff at the same time. <clears throat> and you do one panel at a time. So you do this panel, uh, the, the uh, PFD, then you would stick the uh, card in the MFD and you would uh, do the same uh, install there. <clears throat> it won't cross uh, install between the panels. So now what I'm going to do is rather than uh, apply power to the full panel, because like I say, I've already got it installed, I'm going to just fire up the, uh, the panel with the backup battery and show you how to configure it. Now to do that, I've got to turn on, I'm going to turn on the backup uh, battery power to this panel, uh, but you also, at the same time you apply power, you have, you have to uh, hold down the menu button until the configuration screen comes up. So I need two hands to do that. I'm going to put the camera down just for a second and then I'll come back with you when it starts to boot up. Okay, so I applied the backup powder, power, powder, power, and I've got, I'm holding the menu button and you'll see pretty soon when it, as soon as it says configuration, then I can take my finger off the menu. There it is, configuration mode. So we'll wait till that boots up. Now the first thing you want to do is, you'll see all these different things. First thing you want to do is go into aircraft, which is on mine right here. So we'll touch aircraft. You don't do navigation first because if aircraft isn't set up, then you're not going to be able to find the uh, option to uh, enable smart light. Now we want to go to reference speeds and we want to scroll down until we find uh, best glide Best angle, rate. All right, best glide. Mine is 65, supposedly. Now the um, POH, in one spot says it's 60, in another spot it says 65. I'm gonna use 65, which obviously it's uh, easier to handle the plane going a little bit faster. Now the other thing you're gonna have to set up is the sink rate. And the sink rate is right here. I've got uh, 600 feet a minute just to be i think it's 500 but just to be careful i put it at that but we're going to go up today and, and try to see exactly what the sink rate is so i can come back and change it if i need to okay so once you've done that then go back and the next thing you need to do is go to navigation on mine is right here touch navigation and you will see if you've done if you've installed the software correctly you'll see smart glide 
enabled and settings. So mine's enabled. Uh, you can go to settings and here you can say, you know, what kind of surf, uh, runway surface you want. I've got any, and the reason I've got that is I'm thinking in an emergency, hey, any runway anywhere is gonna be better than nothing. Uh, the uh, minimum runway length, I've got zero. Again, this plane lands so short, any runway that's out there, whether it's dirt or paved, uh, I would be able to get into. Circling direction, it's on auto. You can pick auto or uh, left or right. I'm gonna leave it on auto, uh, so that works. So anyway, so that's the, the uh, install and the uh, configuration. That should get you to where everything's working as far as Smart Glide. And again, I will, uh, uh, when we get going, we'll, we'll go up there and see how, how it demos after we do the uh, calibration of the, of the uh, sync rate. So I'll turn that off right now and I'll talk to you once we get up there. Well, we departed International. We're at the, uh, what they call the South Practice Area. We're at 8,500. So I want to calibrate and see what the glide uh, rate is at 65 knots. Now you should be doing this at full gross. I'm obviously not. Uh, I need uh, a fat passenger to go with me, but I don't have one available. So I'm going to do this, and I'll probably just add 100 feet a minute to it, uh, just because of the uh, gross weight uh, issue. Uh, so what I want to do now is I've got the autopilot on. We're at 8,500 feet. I'm out of heading or south practice area. I've dialed in 6,500 feet as a uh, altitude to descend to. So what I'm going to do, uh, first of all, we'll go to full screen so I can see over here uh, what my descent rate is. I'm going to pull back the power, slow down, and then I'm going to indicate, uh, tell it to indicate the descend using indicated airspeed. That should give me the uh, 65 knots, and I'll dial that in up here, and we'll see what the descent rate is. So, let's give that a shot. I'm going to do hit the uh, indicated airspeed button, that, like that, and I'm going to dial in. that we want 65 knots, and it's 75. All right, let me see here, there's 70. All right, there's 65. Now we'll watch, see if it maintains 65 knots. It's coming down 66, 65. And we'll look and see what our sink rate is. And I'm seeing 500 right now. It's maintaining 65, 600. By 50. There's 500. We'll let this kind of settle in and see kind of what the average is. There's 450. 500. 450. And I've got the uh, I've got the uh, throttle pull all the way back, but I'm still showing 60 or 26 30 RPM. So it, with a full engine out, your prop's not going to be spinning, obviously. And you're going to see that uh, probably a, a bigger sink rate. We got 450 right now, 500, 550, 600. So it's varying. It looks like probably my guess would be maybe 500. So if I add 100 feet a minute to that for uh, the not being at gross weight and the propeller still spinning, I think that would cover it. And obviously you want to be safe and have a good uh, uh, margin of uh, safety there. So uh, I think I think that's going to work though. So and I've got 600 in it right now. You saw when I did the uh, configuration menu how it was set up. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to uh, recover from this. Climb back up to 85. Then we'll head over to Mid Valley and see if uh, if see if we can't uh, uh, see if we can't engage the spark spark glide. I've uh, climbed up to 9,000 feet. 
Uh, interesting. Uh, I'm getting ready to do the uh, thing I told you about going over to Mid Valley and trying the uh, Spark Light. It's what's really interesting is I'm seeing this airport and it's got chevrons showing me the direction to get to that. And it's uh, basically a uh, air ranch. I, I don't even know what that is, to be honest with you, although I've been flying around here forever. Uh, I suspect it's a dirt short, and that's why I've got it set up to find any of those fields. Uh, so I thought that was interesting. It's a little chevrons pointing the way. So we'll see if that works when we get over closer to Mid Valley. Obviously, Mid Valley's over this way, and it's not within the ring, so I'll come back when it is. Okay, we're now heading uh, over to Mid Valley, 9,000 feet. I just talked to departure, tell them what I'm going to do, uh, so there's no surprises to them. Uh, I'm still seeing that that uh, weird uh, runway is uh, showing up as the closest. I'll wait till it switches over with the chevrons to Mid Valley before I activate uh, the spark light. Okay, so now we've got Mid Valley within the glide ring. I'm going to activate the uh, spark light, pull the power off. Smart glide active. Airport. 12 o'clock, three miles. Excellent. Working good so far. And to deactivate it, you can either turn the autopilot off. In fact, I should have done that to start with because it would have activated. But uh, we've got 65, let's hold 64. Let's get nervous about the minimum speed. Should be okay, need to be able to recover real quick in case it gets weird. But the uh, AOA is showing okay. It's doing a little porpoising now, uh, which is kind of weird, but it's trying to maintain that speed. And so we've got 66. Let's see what our descent rate is, a little bit over 500 feet a minute. But it's doing, it's doing what it's supposed to be doing, and this purposing's kind of weird. Uh, I suspect that uh, Garmin will be uh, doing some updates to the software to make it better. But so far it's looking pretty good, and this has gone to full screen with the map. And it's showing, I guess when it goes to yellow, uh, that you've got it activated, and it's got these little uh, chevrons on it, which is kind of interesting, but it's getting us... airport, 12 o'clock, 2 miles. Okay, cool. It's uh, getting us uh, to where we need to be. And again, it's doing this purpose. And I think that's the big problem is that trying to maintain that 65 knots, although it really shouldn't have a problem with that. Uh, I think Bill Fly Go did a video with his, and I didn't, I didn't see him having this porpoising problem, so, but it's real sensitive, I guess, on the airspeed, trying to maintain the 65 knots. And Mid Valley traffic, but still 585 near Mike, 1.4 miles east of the field, 7,700 feet descending, using Garmin Smart Glide test. Uh, we'll not be landing, but we'll be making frequent calls, 5 near Mike. Traffic. Yeah, it's giving me the min speed again, but uh, porpoising is kind of not as bad. And we've got 0.8 miles to the field. We're still way high because the pattern altitude there is like, I think, 52, no, 58. This field's 48. So what the, the plane's going to do now is, I suspect, based on what I've seen, it'll try to circle back towards the airport uh, once we get up there. Mid Valley traffic was still 585, never mind, over the field at 7,100 feet. Uh, doing a engine out test, and I will not be doing a full stop landing. We'll probably descend down to maybe you know, 6,500 feet before we uh, end the test. Mid Valley. Yeah, plates turning back to the airport. Very cool. Okay, I'm going to say this was a successful flight. Stop this now. Now I just canceled Sparklight. I wanted to show you uh, the screen that if you hit the Sparklight button, this screen comes up and allow you to pick. 7700 is your squawk, 121.5, which it puts in standby, which is very cool. Uh, you can activate it with this after I've canceled it, and it's got still showing uh, Mid Valley as the closest field. So I just wanted to show that. And now we'll probably be uh, cleaning up the airplane and head back to International and get this uh, video published. Thanks for coming along. Just want to do a little quick addition. Uh, what I found after you uh, Cancel the uh, spark guide, 
is the uh, G3X, it switched from external GPS to internal GPS for its guidance. So when you get out of the spark line, I was trying to do a flight plan over here to do an approach into Albuquerque. It wouldn't show on the G3X, and that's because it was using the internal GPS. So you hit this over here, change it to external, and that'll take care of that problem.